want to have that made that counter spell. Yeah. To defend yourself. So either way, Jerry Thompson moves on to two and one. We come in here, Todd Anderson on your right, Brandon Dye on your left. A little bit ironic here, Todd Anderson playing Esper Deathblade, his opponent playing Todd's probably favorite or second favorite deck in all of Legacy, Maverick. Yeah, he Todd Anderson really championed this deck uh, through most of last year on the Open Series and brought it to the form, forefront. He was all over, I believe he won a Legacy Open with a Maverick deck in Atlanta, I want to say. So he's very familiar with it too, so it should give him it should give him plenty of knowledge on how to defeat a Maverick deck. And maybe that's why Todd Anderson is up one game to zero over Brandon Die right now. Yeah, he's playing against what looks to be a pretty good looking Maverick deck. We see a, a nice little forest there and a foil uh, noble hierarch. So Brandon Die is gonna be on the play this game. He's gonna sacrifice the Misty Rainforest. We'll see what land he's gonna search out and see if he has the all important turn two neither reliquary which is the thing that really makes this deck get going it looks like it he's tapping yeah. three mana sure does caballero so neither reliquary on turn two is already at four four you see anderson has a death right shaman he's going to start eating away at the graveyard of die source and of posture is going to take care of that Wow, and that Deathrite Shaman doing double duty work there. Yeah. Ooh, and that's a new art, Dark Confidant. I'm not used to Modern seeing that masters. yet. That's a, that may be a topic for future <laughs> conversation. I had my say on Twitter a couple of weeks ago when that card was spoiled. I, I don't know if I want to get into that. It's, it's a little touchy uh, as a fan of art. So we'll just continue with the action here. Brandon Die, Swords of Plowshares on the Dark Confidant, and then a Mother of Runes, Foil Mother of Runes, promo. Now one thing Todd knows is that when you're playing against Maverick, one of the things that you don't want to have happen is let Mother of Runes get active. So if you're able to actually take it down right now, you're going to want to take the opportunity to do that. And he can. He has the Abrupt Decay in his hand. And there and is a, there's a Windswept Heath down there, so. He's going to activate the Death Rite again, exile your, your land. Abrupt Decay, the Mother of Runes. Hmm. Mother of Runes has the ability to tap, give target creature protection of a color of your choice, so it would invalidate so much of the removal in the Esper Deathblade deck. You gotta get it off the board immediately. And I like the I like the wastelanding there too, and the reason I like that is just simply because, it, well, I was gonna say because it's Deathrite Shaman, so cutting the resources and the mana is certainly good because he has this reusable effect, but now that that's gone, mm -hmm. he's a little bottlenecked on mana now, where Brandon Die has the mana advantage, but Todd does have a follow-up Deathrite Shaman and another Wasteland, so he's still doing okay, but you know, we see both players working under very little resources right now. Both of them utilizing their one-drop creatures to make mana, and Brandon Die casts a Thalia, Guardian of Thraven, and then attacks with a Noble Hierarch for two, two Exalteds. Now Todd draws a Stoneforge Mystic for the turn. He's going to eat a land, the Savannah, and he's going to cast a expensive Brainstorm. So hit one, two, and three. Krakus, Jace the Mind Sculptor, and a Mystery Card is put back very quickly. I believe it is a discard spell that Todd puts back. He taps the Krakus, and now he is going to cast Stoneforge Mystic and search up a piece of equipment. Mm. in the action here. The spotter is pointing something out. Mm -hmm. Asking perhaps did you have enough mana to do all that? Yeah, Todd playing, Todd playing pretty quickly. Understandably so, the spotter having a little bit of difficulty keeping up. But the Death Rite Shaman and the Wasteland help cast a Brainstorm. He resolves the Brainstorm, plays the Krakus, his land for the turn, and is able to cast Stoneforge Mystic in search of a Batter Skull. So, gets the Batter Skull. He, he kind of pulled the Umezajite forward, mm -hmm. was thinking about it with all the creatures on the board, but then decides to go with the Batter Skull. Now, Thaya's going to come across for four because of two Exalted triggers, so... Todd is, uh, even though he was stuck on just one land, he's recovering pretty nicely here. And now you're going to see a Green Sun Zenith for one because of Thalia. Right. Is he doing this correctly? Does he... Yeah, okay. So he does remember his own Thalia. But notably, he did it after combat. Missing a point of damage there from the Yeah, that's a little bit surprising. 
it's so important in these matchups. Every every last point, you know, with fetch lands and things, every last point of damage can matter. And with Batter Skull hanging out, and Todd can actually, man, Todd can do something absolutely gross this turn, where he can bounce that, yep, yep. which I knew he was going to see this, yep, Thought, Thought sees. Thought sees the Thalia away, also sees a Mother of Runes, and a Green Sun, another Green Sun Zenith. You know, but the big thing he can do this turn, depending on what he wants to do with that Thought Seize, is now, because Thalia is off the table, Todd has a land in his hand that's in Polluted Delta, and two other mana, so he can actually Detention Sphere away all three of those mm. Noble Hierarchs. That, that is absolutely filthy. And I can't imagine that he's going to pass up on this opportunity to, to, to for this three for one. Three for one that's going to cut Brandon's eye. No, what? He says go. He's leaving the oh, mana up Stone for Stoneforge Mystic. So Todd Anderson potentially missing an opportunity to completely cripple Brandon's eye's mana base. And he looks I'm back genuinely, at his hand and, I'm genuinely surprised by that. I mean, is he so? Is he respect? No, he 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 chose the mother of runes with the Thoughtseize, so it's not even that he's afraid of that. Yeah, I I am I am very surprised by that play, by Anderson of him not taking his opportunity for a three for one with attention sphere. And here's the thing: even though Brandon Die was left with the Green Sun Zenith and has the ability to get Kosali Pride Mage here. If you take away the three noble hierarchs, it would have been ages and ages yeah. before he would be able to do that if Todd had made that play with the detention sphere. Yeah, now Todd can't even put in his stone forge or his uh, his batter skull, and also it, the, the casting detention sphere is difficult now too. Okay, so he is going to put in batter skull. Okay, but Brandon Die has one mana available from the noble hierarch. Yeah, I, I guess and Todd. Okay, so Todd is fine with this happening, and is he going to detention sphere so now? So now he's going to do it, but he just kind of lost his batter skull for no reason yeah that's that that's the issue i have there too is that he basically yeah just lost his batter skull for absolutely no reason that um that uh excuse me that kosali pride mage should have had no effect on this game whatsoever mm -hmm. probably shouldn't even be coming for three or four turns from now because that, that came via green sun zenith right so that cost three mana yeah and this would have set brandon die back to two and now one after the wasteland but as and we know, mistakes do happen. They Nobody's do. perfect. And I don't necessarily... It's not really a, a mistake. I mean, this is still a fine line of play, but you don't have a clock here. Yeah, I mean, he's got a, he's got a small, small little clock that has just been accelerated greatly due to a top-deck Stoneforge Mystic. Now he can search for a piece of equipment, search for Umo Jite, put that into play, cast it, and then attack the two. So... Things have uh, things have turned around quite a bit, and now Brandon Dye is stuck with one basic forest. He's taking a draw step every turn, hoping to draw lands, and now Todd can just keep pressing his advantage. I really think what happened there was that the Todd had had the search effect, right? Okay. And then he didn't look at his hand until after he was done shuffling, and I think during the shuffling he said go. So he did not. Confirm, reconfirm what mm -hmm. was in his hand after completing the search effect to see the detention sphere and thought, oh, well, I already said go, can't cast it anymore. Yeah. So, kind of doing a shortcut there, I believe, to pass the turn and then just missing the detention sphere. I think I'm with you. As you see, Brandon Die oh. is going to search up, he searches up a taiga. Now, he does cast Zuma's Always Jit to take care of the one that Anderson does have, but he searches up a taiga, which is something you don't see a ton of in Maverick decks. Immediately, I, I search scanning the deck list, seeing what that Taiga is there for, and it's gonna, or excuse me, that Tundra, which is going to allow him to cast Dice of Saint Trap, which are three copies in the main deck, as well as four copies of Spell Pierce in the sideboard for Dice Maverick deck. So, something again that's non-traditional, but I was certainly curious to see that. And now pecking back and forth, or pecking forth, Todd Anderson, attacking with those one-two Stoneforge Mystics. Getting a little extra damage with Death Rite Shaman and keeping Brandon Die locked down. The Caracas is keeping Athalia at bay. Now Brandon has a Kosali Pride Mage, which he's able to stick. Yeah, but some Death Rite Shaman activations. Here comes the Life Loss. Take four. He's got one more in the graveyard. And Take four more. And the Stone Forges will finish it. Yeah, so Brandon Die is going to concede the game, and Todd Anderson is going to win this match. Two games to zero. Esper Deathblade is going to take it down. The deck that he just won a Legacy Open with two weeks ago in Baltimore, he's looking to run it back.
moves on to two and one. Brandon Dye gets his second loss with Maverick. And a nice win there.